All right, so video two, uh, I'm going to be looking at what does it mean to be in rotation and what doesn't. So what actually constitutes this? What are the rules behind it? All right, so first things first, rotations only apply. Rotations only apply before the serve. All right, so once the serve goes, you can pretty much move to wherever you want and you can pretty much stay there until the point is over. Um, given that you don't do anything illegal, like if you're backcourt, you step in front of the attack line and you uh, hit the ball above the heart of the net, then that's illegal. But other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, but the important thing is that you're doing it, uh, you're, you're in rotation before the serve actually goes. Um, that's what the rotation is all about. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. So once the serve goes, you move to your default position and you play the point out there. Um, so we only care about the player to your left and the right. So if I'm looking at position two, whoever's there, okay, there's um, all we care about is whoever is to the left and to the right. So to the left of um, position two is, uh, well, to the, to the sides, I guess. So position three and position one. It uh, depends on how you look at it, left and right can change. Um, but we're only concerned about who is in position 3, who is in position 3 relative to 2, and who is in position 1 relative to 2. Okay, and that's how you kind of tell. So 2 has to be one rotation behind who is in position 1, and one rotation in front who is in position 3. So the person in position 2 has to serve before position 3 and has to serve after position 1. Okay, so that's the general kind of gist of it. And the way you check at the rotation is you look at who's opposite. Okay, so here we see that position two is opposite whoever's in position five. They should be the same position. So if two is a pass hitter, okay, then five should be a pass hitter as well. So that's what we talk about when we're um, looking at whether you're in rotation or not. Okay, um, what's the second ref will do during the games is they'll count anti-clockwise to make sure... Um, you're in the right position. So you'll see, oh, uh, you know, position one, position two, position three, position four, position five, position six. So it's the same, so you count. Okay, so you go anti-clockwise, you see who was in position one there. Okay, who's the next position? Position two, position three, four, five, six. It's a really bad four. Okay, and so if, if you're a passer in position two, and your other pass hitters are not in position 5, so as in they're not opposite each other, then something's wrong and you add a rotation. So these two should be a pass hitter. Okay, usually 1 and one and 4 will be the setter. They all have to be opposite each other, right? And the 3 and 6 should be middle. Okay, just for the start, okay? So the setter's in position 1, they serve, lose the point, they side out. The next person to serve will be the pass hitter, so the pass hitter will go to to position one to serve, and that's how it goes. And it should be pass hitter, middle, setter, pass hitter, middle, setter. So that's what I mean by, um, I guess, this diagram and how you visualize. It, it may be a bit confusing, but you get the idea of it. Okay, so the things that we're concerned about is the players to your left and the right. So if you're looking at position one, we're only concerned about who's in position two and position six. And you check that by seeing who's, if you're opposite your other, other position. But we don't care about position 3 and position 5 um, when we're talking about uh, rotations in this sense. Right, okay. So this is, I guess, what I was talking about here. I've just drawn over it again. Second ref counts in a clockwise. You have to be in between the players to your left and the right, directly opposite you. Okay, this, this box here is important because it can get confusing if you... Don't recognize that this is only before the serve. So once the serve goes, you have to move to your default position. Okay, do you remember where your default position was? So if you are uh, the setter, okay, you start making sure that you're to um, one rotation ahead of uh, position two, which would be the pass hitter, and one rotation behind whoever's in six, which would be the middle. Okay, and that's when you got to start like that. Make sure you're squished in between the pass hitter and the middle. Okay, once the serve goes, don't care where you go. As long as if you're in the back court, you stay back court. If you're in the front court, you just stay back front court, I guess. As long as the, your back court player doesn't 
make an attack over the net. Okay, uh, and everyone else doesn't matter. So if you were looking at, the, at it from the setter's perspective here, we don't care about three and five. We're just looking to make sure that they're opposite each other before the serve. Okay. Uh, so, uh, again, this is, I guess, the diagram. This is what corresponds to. So you can see the pass hitter is in position one over here. All right, if you keep going around, like follow this arrow, you see the next player is the middle in position two. Right? So when you're counting backwards, you always count anti-clockwise. We'll go anti-clockwise and volleyball. That's the middle there. Who's in position three is the opposite. The opposite's here. Position four is a pass hitter. Position five is the middle. Position six is the setter. Okay, that's before the serve. So you want to make sure that pass hitter sees the setter to the left and the middle as in the rotation after. Okay, the middle over here wants to check. Okay, who's uh, in the rotation after? It's the setter. Who's in rotation ahead of me? It's the pass hitter, because the pass hitter is going to serve before I get around, right? because we rotate clockwise. That's kind of weird in that, in that we're looking the rotations in terms of how we move in a game, go clockwise, but the way we kind of check that is that we go anti-clockwise. Right? This is pretty confusing, but I guess you get the hang of it. So what I mean by that is that, you know, once you, once you win the point, the middle in position five here goes to position four. Okay, after that, the next rotation, Go to position three, position two, position one, and then you're back to serve. Okay, that's how you kind of move in, well, in that clockwise kind of way. Okay, but when I'm actually um, looking at how you check the rotations and and um, the way that they write it on the scorecard and and when the second ref checks it before the game is that you check, okay, pass it is in one, okay, the next number up is position two. So you check that the middle is after the pass hitter the opposite is after the middle, the pass hitter is after the opposite, okay, the, and um, the middle is after the pass hitter and so on. Okay, so we're actually kind of checking one, two, three, four, five, six, even though you rotate in that direction. Okay, it's a bit weird, but hopefully you kind of understand that. Here's an example. Okay, so this is uh, one of the rotations, which is quite tricky. Okay, so you check. Start in position one. So the pass hitter has just served. The pass hitter serves, okay, they lose the point. Okay, it comes up, passing there. So this is the back court pass hitter. So remember how we're saying the front court pass hitter always passes from this position. If you're in back court, it's a bit different. You just stay in your kind of position. So pass hitter is in position one. But the front court pass hitter always defends from this back left kind of position. Uh, whether they're in position four, three, or two, it's this region here that they always pass in just to kind of clarify that a bit more. Okay, so we check. Okay, pass hitter is in position one, right here. So who should be in the next row counting anti-clockwise? Should be the middle. Okay, so you see the pass hitters here. The person to in um, one rotation behind the pass hitter should be the middle. Yep, so we see the middle here. And that's good. So the middle is front court and they're in rotation. The front court player has to be in front of the back court player. Can you see that? The middle's in front of the, in the back court player. So we're all good there. Okay, what else are we concerned with? We're concerned with whoever is to the other side of the pass hitter. And that's the setter. So the setter here is in position six. All right, where's the setter? The setter has to be to the left of the pass hitter. To the left of the pass hitter. Do we see that? Okay, the setter is here. We see that the setter, generally, yep, is to the left of the pass hitter. So that's good. Does it matter because they're both backcourt players? Both of these guys are backcourt players, so it doesn't matter whether one's in front or behind because they're both the same. They're both in the backcourt. Okay, this is a bit confusing, and you may be asking, why the heck is a setter in front of the middle? Is that not, uh, is that not illegal because... The backcourt player, position six, is in front of a frontcourt player, position five. So that's what I was saying earlier, is that when we're talking about rotations, if we're looking at the setter here, so the setter's over here, all we care about is who's to the left, uh, to the right and to the left, or vice versa, okay? So we don't care about who's in these two positions here. We have to check 
who's in the opposite position. Okay, it's a key thing. We don't actually care about these two people here. All right, so we're looking from the perspective of the setter here. Who are we concerned about? Who's in position one? Who's in position two? Okay, so that those are the people we 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 care about the most. So what we don't care about is the position in position people in position two and the people in person in position four. Okay, so where's position mm, two? So from the perspective of the setter, so looking at the perspective of the setter, which is here, the people we don't care about, this guy here, and this guy here. Okay, and the people we are are concerned about is this guy here and this guy here. And we're seeing here. One and five. So the setter has to be in between whoever's in one and whoever's in five. Okay, so that actually ticks all the boxes. And then you can check three and six have to be opposite each other. Okay, they say they're opposite. How do you do that? You check they're opposite because you count you count one, two, three. Okay, and if that number is three, if you count one, two, three, then they're right. So you go around the order. So you start with the setter. Who's next? One, two, three. Okay, they are opposite each other. So that's good. Okay, even though they're closer to each other, it's all about this kind of rotation wheel and checking what's actually going on. All right, it's a bit confusing. Uh, I'm scribbled everywhere, um, but hopefully that makes kind of some sense. Uh, just to recap, all that we cared about, if we were just looking at the setter, let's have it to the left, to the right, and opposite, and don't care about these guys. All right? Um, I might leave that there, and I'll talk about the 5-1 rotation. So this is where all the fun begins. Um, key things, looking at rotation, we only figure out the player to the left and the right. Okay, and you must be opposite your position. It's opposite, like that. You only care about who's to your left and to your right. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, just coming back to my um, trusty volleyball game over here. So let's look at the rotation we were just talking about here. Okay, so you, we see who's in position one. It's me. So that's a pass hitter. In position one. Okay, I'll just label these guys. So Nathan is the middle, and she is in position two. Okay, we see Aaron here. So here's our setter. All right, this is a weird one. Aaron has to be in between myself, who's here, and Christian, who's over here. So Christian's in the middle, and he's in position five. Okay, so someone's got to be in this kind of gap here. And Aaron has to be in there. But Aaron here... Aaron is in position 6, so here's our setter, and he's in 6. So you can see he is in between myself and Christian. So he actually is in this gap, he's just shifted forward. Okay, so it's a bit confusing, but that's the general, I guess, gist of, of this weird and wacky rotation. So, uh, just to check who are the players we don't care about. For Aaron we don't care about, let's get back to our diagram. Hopefully this doesn't disappear on me. Okay. So if we're looking at the setter here, people we care about, the position one and position five. So I lost my thing. Okay, so who's in position one and who's in position five? Uh, we see position one is me, and position five is Christian. Okay, and that's all good. So we've established that he's in rotation in the backcourt. Who are the people we don't care about? Who we don't care about? Position four and position two for this weird rotation. Okay, so who's in position four? We see it's Jesse over here. So because I'm in one, right? Jesse's in four. We're both pass hitters. We're both opposite each other. Pass hitter in, in one. And we don't care, uh, and Nathan is here, and two. Okay, so what who, the people we don't care about, and Jesse over here, and Nathan over here. Okay, the people we do care about is Christian here, and myself. And there is an in between. So he's in rotation, even though he is in the backcourt. Okay, he can still be in front of Nathan here, because we don't care about Nathan. 
that's not the people we're interested in. We're only interested in Christian and myself.